find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. But I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail for the set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Beat up for the taste of the poor. Six, six, six. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 21. We're ready to uh, talk indie wrestling, have some fun here. Of course, uh, uh, I'm uh, Sorgatron Mike Sorg here, part of Sorgatron Media, doing some uh, wrestling production here in the Western PA and uh, Ohio, as we're going to talk about here uh, in a little bit. Uh, and of course, my co-patriot on the show from Texas, uh, the ring announcer, ringside announcer for uh inspire pro the newly minted nwa affiliate inspire pro <laughs> yeah wow and we'll talk about that uh I, I think later in this show and then coming up in the coming weeks about what that means to you guys how you doing amen uh coming off I'm, a fantastic weekend from the sounds of it i am doing fantastic i'm feeling fantastic sorg uh it's a been good weekend for me and professional wrestling and it makes me excited to talk about indie wrestling which we do every week here awesome so. And we're going to get to that in a moment. Of course, thanks to our friend Basic Sickness, basicsickness.com for that intro music. Uh, you can check out free tracks, preview other ones, including his latest album over there. And you can check out this and other episodes of uh, uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show, our wrap-ups for Raw and TNA and, and NXT over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, you can find this show and others over on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, uh, Spreaker, iHeartRadio app. Um, and of course, on uh, many of those, you can also look up Wrestling Mayhem Show super feed to get this get everything wrestling that we do on the sorgatron media network um so you don't miss uh miss a thing there um and of course you can drop us a line at good times at wrestling mayhem please hit the subject line indie so we can separate it out from our other shows and you can drop us a line on the voicemail at uh 412-206-WMS0. That's 9670. Uh, hit us up on Twitter, at Mayhem Show, and on Facebook and Google Plus under the Wrestling Mayhem Show, including a great Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, uh, group, actually, uh, where we have a lot of discussion uh, about all kinds of wrestling. We've been a lot of, talking a lot of Chikara in there, actually, as well. Uh, so uh, a lot of good stuff there. Please join any of those. And you can join us here live at 11 p.m. Eastern Time. 10 o'clock central uh, at live.sorgatronmedia.com weekly. And you can join us earlier at 9 p.m. for the Wrestling Mayhem Show or even earlier. We start at 4, 4 o'clock p.m. with uh, some other stuff, all kinds of geeky and uh, sciencey stuff all through the night. Uh, here on podcast day uh, today uh, our guest uh, it's my turn so somebody up from this area um, uh, somebody from a uh, event that I've had a pleasure of being part of the last two years and now coming up this Friday is the uh, Dustin Batdorf Invitational the DBI 3 a great event and uh, we're going to talk about the guy behind it uh, Juice Jennings joining us on the line on the phone this week how you doing guy good man how are you all right. So, uh, first of all, before we get into the event, uh, I, you know, I know you uh, in particular. I think we first met because of RWA uh, uh -huh. up here in West Newton. Um, so, uh, tell me, uh, Juice Jennings, oh my God, the thunder's coming. We'll see how this lasts. <laughs> <laughs> tell me, uh, who is Juice Jennings, man? Uh, the, uh, what do people expect if they're going to see you on a card? Uh, well, you know, first and foremost, I'm just a wrestling fan turned wrestler, uh, just like everybody else. Uh, grew up watching it forever, ever. Finally got around to uh, just getting to it and actually doing it, and uh, turned out I was pretty good at it. So I had to do my best, and, uh, you know, I try to get out wherever I can, but um, I'm always on the wrestler side of it, but uh, the DBI is my one venture into the uh, the boss territory, the promoting. It's uh, And I'm not even the, the guy in charge. I'm just kind of... One of the guys that got it going, uh, I, I was lucky enough to pitch it to the right people who were able to take it to a whole new level. And it's one of the top shows in Ohio. So it's just once a year. Awesome. It's an extravaganza for just uh, guys from all over Ohio, Indiana, uh, PA. Uh, it's kind of a who's who, but uh, a lot of matchups you'll only see at the DBI. Sometimes you've never seen these matchups before. 
These guys work for different promotions. These guys would normally never cross paths, but uh, this Friday you'll see some matches just like that at the DBI3. Awesome. And I want to get more into that here in a moment and, and more how this event came about and uh, uh, some more of the meaning behind it. But again, getting to know you a little bit. Uh, so you mentioned fan turn wrestler. We, you know, we really want to kind of strike that home to a lot of these guys, especially doing the indies as long as some of you guys have our fans to begin with. So tell me, what, what's kind of your earliest uh, wrestling memory that got you into it? Let's see. Oh man, wrestling was always it was always there. It was always something I was interested in as far back as I can remember. I remember Hogan and Andre and that being a big deal. Uh I think I actually started really getting into it was uh Raw just started coming on T V, so it was like the early nineties. And uh, I actually I think the first thing that I ever I remember being really, really drawn into it for some reason. This was uh pre attitude era. I remember watching uh, IRS wrestle uh, Al Matador, Tito Santana, <laughs> and uh, not even knowing who they were. I just thought to myself, who's going to win, this businessman or this bullfighter? And that's uh, that's kind of where, where it all started. And I always wanted them to pull that tie, too. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Always dressed to impress. Uh, so I want to get you know get the personal questions out of, out of the way so we can get right to this event. So one thing we we like to talk about uh, is you know what is the the best and the worst of indie wrestling. Uh, of course, like you said, you're kind of wearing a different hat for this show, but mostly you're a wrestler on the card, uh, and you can go whichever first uh, that you want to do. So so what is what is the kind of the burst the the, the the greatest thing and the thing that sucks most about uh, having to get out there uh, uh, as much as you do? Let's see, the best and the worst. Uh, I mean, the best is just being able to do what you love, being able to, to do something that you've wanted to do for a long, long time. Growing up, you see it on TV, and you, you go to the shows, and you want to be that. And there's so many people that, that want to do that and want to you know venture into pro wrestling, but as soon as they get a real taste of what it really is and how it really, uh, how it really works, they realize they can't handle it. Uh, and that's why, let's just say, uh, you know, maybe uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of a good, good way to say this. A lot of guys do it, but only a few guys can, can really do it well. Mm-hmm. And uh, to be a guy that does it well, you really have to uh, dive in and, and not, you know, just uh, be a fan. Allow yourself to be a fan, but also uh, look at yourself as an entertainer and take yourself seriously because you have to take wrestling seriously. But just being in the ring and uh, and actually being to take part in this thing that you love so much, that's the best part. Mm-hmm. Uh, driving to the shows, the camaraderie with the guys, uh, meeting fans, having fans uh, come up to you at a show and they'll say, oh, I saw a match, uh, you know, X amount of years ago. And I, I that was so awesome. And the fact that they hold that and uh, still remember, that just says something, you know. So uh, it's a little generalized. It's kind of a big picture thing. But uh, that's 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 the best part about it. Uh, the worst part about indie wrestling, uh, probably the frustration. <laughs> You're frustrated a lot and there's a lot of jealousy. You try not to be jealous, but you are because you want to be at a certain level. You see guys who are at that level. You think you're at that same level. So you just, you want to get noticed the way they're noticed. And that's just getting out there, uh, working everywhere you can and, uh, impressing the right people. But, um, it just gets a little frustrating with, they say the territories, are dead, but I disagree. I think the territories just split into more territories that split into more territories, and then you know you don't have a couple states as a territory anymore. You have a couple towns. Sometimes it's one town, and sometimes you have two or three companies running in the same town. So that's stuff that gets frustrating about wrestling. Is that uh, a lot of people are doing it that shouldn't be doing it? There's too many people doing it that should be buying tickets. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know it's just overly saturated uh, with wrestlers these days. So the guys that really deserve a shot sometimes kind of get lost in the shuffle, I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Certainly. Hey, and there's been a lot of talk. Like uh, uh, recently, I uh, actually did a little something with AJ Styles talking about. Uh, you know, we just came off a show that was uh, brought about 1,200 people uh, up to Meadville, PA, um, and, and you know, with a lot of good indie talent. And and again, it seems like there's these groups. We get a list. I know we're on a mailing list. I think Eamon, you are too. Uh, mm-hmm. That list. It looks like every indie running in a weekend, and it is an, a tremendous list. And it seems like there's not. Re- wrestling is not too far away no matter where you are in the United States. So you, know, you it, so it really feels like this is kind of a resurgence, not of territories, but of like independent, like that lower level wrestling. I mean, there's indie wrestling everywhere. And I didn't know this. It's, it's everywhere, but it's 
unless you know where to look for it, it might as well not exist. Because growing up, I loved uh, wrestling so much. But as far as I knew, uh, WWE, WWF at the time was all there was. Mm-hmm. Um, I eventually found, I stumbled onto a show that was, you know, a couple towns over, and I went. And I'm like, this is happening all over the place? Like, how long has this been going on, you know? Uh, and if I had known about the indie scene earlier, I would have dove into it a lot faster. I got into the game a lot later. I was in my mid to late 20s when I, uh, well, my mid-20s mm-hmm. when I started. So a lot of guys start 18, you know, straight, straight out of high school. I was already 25, 26 when I even started wrestling. So, um, yeah, I kind of forgot. I kind of went off on a tangent, but yeah. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, it definitely seems like a lot of them fishbowl. Uh, Amy, did you have something you want to say? No, I, I, I just found that point really important to me because I attested to that. Like, I live in Corpus Christi where there kind of really isn't a lot of indie wrestling, but I venture like further into Texas and there's so much. Um, so it is, a, it is a matter of people don't always realize that there's stuff out there. Well, I mean, you know, promoters have to promote. Sometimes a lot of promoters forget that aspect of the job. So mm-hmm. uh, yeah, and exactly. I'll, I'll say this. I've said it before. If, if uh, you go and you wrestle – for a bunch of strangers who are paying to see wrestling, then you're a professional, and that is a wrestling show. If you are wrestling for your friends and family who are coming to support you, that's a rehearsal. That's like a recital. You know what I'm saying? There's mm-hmm. a difference. Definitely, definitely. So uh, speaking of the big show, let, let's let's talk about a little bit uh, the DBI three third time you guys are doing it. Can you tell me a little bit of background? Uh, uh, let our listeners know, like why why does the DBI happen? What it, what is the what is the reason for the show? Uh, well, I mean it's. Now it's it's a happy time, it's a celebration, but it all came from a tragedy. Uh, my younger brother is, is Dustin Batdorf. Um, he struggled with uh, addiction for a couple of years and he ended up losing his uh, his life to a heroin overdose in 2011. Um, and uh, I just felt like I felt the need to uh, try to do something, so I just tried to draw from my love of pro wrestling. I wanted to do something that was uplifting and something in his memory and it was supposed to just be a one and done show um i pitched it to my dad who also kind of got behind the uh the drug education aspect after dustin passed he uh he does speaking engagements all over the state of ohio he uh he's worked with um uh recognized organizations that do all kinds of drug education stuff like that and uh we combined our efforts we put together the first dbi and it's, it's all for drug education. And um, I think uh, with uh, the draw from the event and all the uh, donations, uh, we raised over $25,000 worth of, uh, of proceeds to go to the cause. And we actually uh, formed, uh, for our county that we live in, we formed our branch of what's called the SOLACE organization. SOLACE is S-O-L-A-C-E, stands for Surviving Our Loss and Continuing Every Day. And it uh, gives... Uh, gives treatment to people who need, uh, who are struggling with addic- addiction. It helps people uh, who have lost family members or loved ones to addiction. Uh, it even helps uh, people who have lost loved ones to just violence or, uh, you know, uh, any, any kind of thing. It's, it goes outside drugs, but uh, that's the main focus, obviously. And then uh, my dad still continues to do the, uh, the speaking engagements and stuff like that. And um, it's just kind of grown. You know, we thought we were just going to do the one uh came back and did number two and now you know it gets bigger and better every year we get more people every year raise more money every year so we're just trying to kind of get the word out use pro wrestling uh as a vehicle to uh spread the word about uh the dangers of uh drug addiction mm-hmm. it, awesome. I, I know for me uh it was a it was a pleasure to be a part of the last two here uh, looking forward to this friday show and uh and also for, you know for me it, it's a great to see uh kind of a display of what's going on in ohio as far as wrestling goes and seeing them all pull together for something like this as many people as on the show uh that's 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 on the show uh you know uh guys we're fans of here jock Sampson, of course one of the early uh interviews here on this show uh, uh speaks very highly of this and and has been a, a pleasure on there um uh, guys like uh jeremy maddox that uh, we saw in a, a video that we're showing a little bit earlier with you um and it's been a great discovery as far as that as far as me as far as wrestling goes and it's so great to see um you know we do something you know here where we we take video games and say let's do this for good and it's good to see wrestling uh uh kind of pulling together for something like that yeah it's uh there's really there's a lot of like i said before there's a lot of ego in pro wrestling there's a guy a lot of guys trying to put themselves before anybody else and uh you kind of have to be to be successful you have to be a little selfish uh to get noticed and get recognized but this is the one event i can honestly say that 
there's no ego at this event. Everybody is uh, putting the cause in front of themselves. And, uh, you know, these guys, uh, they're donating their time. Nobody gets paid for the show. It's all for charity. And, uh, like I said, it's, it's a great group of guys because, um, again, like I said before, you, you, you might never see this uh, collection of wrestlers on the same card anywhere else, but it's only because of this great cause that we're all coming together. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we're seeing a little bit of highlights here while we're talking. Um, so uh, this year, uh, anything we need to, uh, and again, you guys are seeing on the video, if you're watching this on YouTube or live here, um, it's a hell of a production too. Um, this is actually, uh, believe it or not, uh, this, this video you're seeing is happening at a church. The, the That's cool. right. That's uh, River Tree Christian Church. That's actually the church where my uh, my dad has gone. He's, he's a uh, an usher there. He's been going there for like 10 or 15 years. <laughs> and uh, funny story is that actually that's the church where uh dustin's memorial service was held wow. and uh the story behind how he even picked that building in the first place was i'm sitting in the memorial service and um you know the ceremony's going on and i'm just kind of my mind's kind of wandering and just being constantly thinking about uh, the business i'm just always kind of thinking about you know what can i do as far as uh what would be a good place for a show or, or this or that and uh, not even thinking about, I don't think the concept of having a charity show had even, uh, you know, come to me yet, but I'm just looking around and, and it's a, you know, it's a beautiful church. It's not, it's not a churchy church, you know what I mean? It's, uh, it's a big auditorium. Uh, there's no stained glass windows or anything. It's just, uh, you know, it's got a big flat floor. It's got a giant Titan Tron-esque uh, projection <laughs> screen over the stage and uh, all these lights and you know they have a live band that plays during their uh, services so there's all these lights and there's smoke and there's all this stuff because i've been there for services too and i just thought man it would be cool to do a wrestling show in here and uh finally i just kind of put it all together i thought i'm going to do the show i want to have some guys come together and do a show for drug education so in dustin's memory so uh where can we do this and i thought with my dad being um, and I'm sure there for as long as he has been, maybe he could get us in there. And I, I really wasn't even, I didn't really think it would happen to be honest, just because I just, it's a church. People go there to, uh, you know, worship and do their thing. And I don't know if they would be as open to having a wrestling show in the, in their sanctuary, but, uh, I was pleasantly surprised. They had to run it past some higher ups, but everybody got on board and, uh, they gave us a shot the first year. It was fantastic. Um, you really can't find. Uh, you know, I, I challenge anyone to find a uh, production value for a show that's uh, much better than than the DBI. And I owe that all to uh, the River Tree production team. Uh, we don't bring any of that in there. That's already there. So, uh, mm-hmm. But they were on board. We did the first year. It was a huge success. And then uh, before we could even finish celebrating the, you know, the uh, good job we had done on the first one, they're already pressuring us to get a date for the second one. Nice. So uh, we did that. And again, here we are, number three coming up this Friday. That's good. That's good. And, and you know, even for me in church, it's not it's not a watered down show. It's a fun wrestling show. You know, I mean, you're seeing a lot of really high impact stuff on the preview video uh, that that's on on your YouTube here. Um, it really is. It's a really good display of talent. It's a lot of fun. The Battle Royal was was a riot last last year. Um, <laughs> Jock Sampson and his lookalike friends, for instance, uh, were were uh, pretty interesting. So yeah, there's a four four guys that all are. Uh covered in chest hair and were out of shape so yeah it really yeah weird. yeah it was a little odd one had a winnie the pooh mask um i, I know he had he gave a name to him when we had him on the show here a few weeks ago but uh yeah looking forward he was, he was honky the pooh honky the pooh that's right that's right i think that's what it was that's right um a fantastic so uh for people who want to find out more about the dbi um uh give us all the details uh when is it where is it where can they find stuff online uh, DBI three is, uh, the Dustin Bantorf Invitational number three dropkick addiction. It is this Friday, May 30th in Maslin, Ohio at River Tree Christian Church. Um, you can get us on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash Dustin Batdorf Invitational. Uh, you can get us on Twitter at DBI underscore wrestling. Uh, there's, um, all kinds of promotional videos and highlights from the previous events on YouTube. Just, um, I think just search DBI wrestling and uh, uh, it's going to be a great event. We're going to, you know, put together some great matches again. We're going to put on a great show. We're going to raise a lot of money and try to educate some people. And um, hopefully it all turns out. All right. Awesome. And where can people find you if they want to find out more about juice Jennings? 
Uh, if you want to get a hold of me, I'm on Twitter at Juice Jennings. On Facebook, I am facebook.com slash the Juice Jennings. And you can always uh, hit me up with uh, email at uh, juicejennings at gmail.com. All right. Thanks, Juice Jennings. And uh, again, be sure to check out DBI. And of course, that'll be available. Uh, and actually, I forgot to mention, uh, we actually do have DBI 1 and 2 available on DVD and digital download over at sorgatronmedia.com slash store. Um, go to, I believe it's under miscellaneous, and you can find both of those there. Proceeds, a portion of the proceeds do go to the fund that we were talking about and help raise money for uh, drug, drug, uh, drug addiction awareness and everything uh, that DBI and Souls program are doing over there in uh, Ohio. Ohio. Uh, so it's a great cause, great shows. You will not be disappointed. Somebody was in the chat room actually earlier tonight during, I think, the video game show earlier tonight, mm -hmm. or maybe even the movie show, uh, talking about the event and how he enjoyed it so much. Uh, so it, it's really a fun time, and we'll look forward to it every 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 year. Uh, so with that, uh, you had a little bit of indie wrestling going on this weekend, sir. What happened at Inspire Pro in Texas? A lot of really fantastic stuff happened at Inspire Pro in Texas, or. Uh, we had our big uh, In Their Blood event this past weekend uh, for Inspire Pro this past Sunday. Um, our first uh, showcase event, you could say, for our uh, XX division, our women's division. Big night for us. Uh, I, and I think top to bottom, it was a really, really fun night. Really great card uh, uh, up and down. Uh, huge main event. Really great main event between uh, Barbie Hayden and Portia Perez for the NWA World Women's title. Um, and speaking of that NWA World Women's title. Uh, before that match was made, uh, the announcement was made by the, uh, the CEO of, uh, of the uh, National Wrestling Alliance, uh, Tony Brooklyn, uh, that us at Inspire Pro Wrestling have officially joined the National Wrestling Alliance, um, which is huge for a lot of us. Uh, it was a really, really emotional and, and fulfilling night for a lot of us. Uh, um, Brandon Stroud mentioned in the introduction uh, to of Tony Brooklyn to the ring how, you know, he grew up when he was three years old going to the Greensboro Coliseum to watch, you know, this and, and sort of through that gaining an understanding that, you know, this is what I love, pro wrestling. Um, and this is something that's meant a lot to us. Uh, Justin Bisnett, uh, one of the co-owners of Inspire, who we've had on the show, has worked very closely with Tony Brooklyn uh, for many years as part of the NWA. Uh, they have a great history with each other, um, and it's it's awesome to be a part of it. Um, and, and you know, I, I mentioned it before. Um, I'm ten months into the wrestling business, I guess you could say, uh, as a commentator and. I have the privilege now to say that I work for the National Wrestling Alliance, and that's kind of crazy to me. Um, it's it's a huge honor, and and it's something that you know none of us take lightly. Uh, I think it's amazing to be a part of this, um, and I'm so so excited for the things to come. There's going to be a lot of amazing stuff going forward, um, based off of the talks with Tony Brooklyn and and Bruce Tharp, who's the president of the NWA. Um, there's going to be a lot of really cool stuff coming. Um, and, and this is a new chapter for us, and it's a chapter we're super excited about, a chapter that um, the fans and attendants were excited about. Um, we've had a lot of really good matches in Inspire Pro and, and, and some cool moments, but I think there was a, there was the biggest reaction was got was when we made that announcement um, because I think a lot of people saw that this was big for us. Um, so I, I am truly astonished and amazed that, um all of you know last sunday happened and and i'm proud to be a part of nwa inspire pro wrestling going forward it's awesome that's awesome first of all okay a, a lot of great news but i have mm -hmm. to level some uh some some criticisms and some questions to you some of the hard questions following inspire first of all because right, we because we uh i believe a couple of years ago on the main show we have oh no no i wasn't even getting to that one yet uh, because oh, okay. it's been called out in the chat room that your show in their blood featured no blood. There was no blood uh, because it was inside them. Oh, okay. Okay. So clarification. Just want to make sure. I was yeah, worried so. about that. Um, awesome. So the, again, the thing we <laughs> talked about, again, we talked about on the mayhem show and we wondered what was, we, we kind of, pontificated about the nwa 
you know, it's definitely not. I mean, God, we're looking at Clash of the Champions. I'm watching some of the earlier ones right now on WWE Network, mm. and this was the NWA back then. This was the personification of what it stood for. And then, um, really, kind of getting slapped down. It feels like uh, when you know the infamous Shane Douglas ECW incident um, mm. about throwing down the world title, right? Um, and we talked about like you know. From our view, what was the point of the NWA? What does it do? What What is the purpose of it? You know, it does it really matter in I don't know indie wrestling, pro wrestling, in in mm-hmm. comparison to what it used to? Is it a shadow of its former self? Because I think there was some weird stuff. There was some stories coming out that that did sound a little fishy. Now, you being a part of now an NWA affiliate and and you know to whatever capacity, what mm-hmm. do you see? You know, obviously, you know, Texas, and I don't know if it's just because it's Texas, um, because I know up here in Pittsburgh we lost our NWA affiliate. They got rid of it for whatever reason. Um, it, it, there's it, there's um you know there, there still are uh, across the country, mm-hmm. um, but there is definitely, you know, and even beyond the country too. Um there's some uh, uh, out of the country stuff as well. Um I think the importance of the NWA and I think the testament is it's not it's not what you expect from the Clash of the Champions era. You know, it's not. No, of course. But it, I think it goes back to what we met, talked about with Juice Jennings a bit. The idea of in wrestling, there's sort of a, an idea that people have egos and, and nobody wants to work together and nobody wants to be on the same page. And and Sorg, I know, you know, we've we both have seen this a lot throughout independent wrestling no matter what state it's in no matter where it is indie wrestling companies always have problems and there's always feuding and there's always all the all that crap that comes with independent wrestling um the nwa and and it, in between its affiliates there's a lot of of working together mm-hmm. there's a lot of that's i think what's the big what what makes the nwa important um, already we're working together with a lot of groups. Uh, NWA 360 that runs out of Temple, uh, is, we're holding an Inspire Pro Championship match there uh, on the June 27th. Um, there is tons of collaboration uh, with us, uh, NWA Houston, Brandon Outlaw, NWA Brandon Outlaw Wrestling that's in San Antonio, uh, even companies that are beyond that. It, it, a lot of times you get cliched saying, oh, you know, wrestling, we're a family. This does really feel like a family to us because we're all – for each other's best interests. Mm-hmm. It's, it really comes off that way. Um, I have taught, and also like, I think people think of the NWA and they think of old school wrestling and they think of, and, and it's, it's the NWA doesn't, you know, avoid their history. And I don't think any company should avoid their history um, that, you know, because your history gets you to where you are today. Um, but it's not that. Um, I have personally gotten to uh, speak with Tony Brooklyn, the CEO, uh, with uh, the co-owners of Inspire as well. Nice. Um, the reason that they they want they saw something in us is because of what we've been producing, uh, the stuff we've been putting out, and they don't want to change that. We aren't going to immediately become an old school wrestling promotion. We aren't going to change our style. We aren't going to change the way we are. Um, and and Tony Brooklyn and Bruce Star do not want that. They want us to be us and, and, and to have that, be part of that family and be part of that companionship and, and that, that ability to work together. That is so rare in independent wrestling. Um, and so far, I think the NWA has been very successful. Um, the night before Inspire Pro show, uh, Saturday in Carthage, Texas, uh, which is North Texas, uh, NWA main event drew, I believe, 1,500 people uh, to one of their events. And and it doesn't matter if it's an NWA show. It doesn't matter, you know, it, it matters in the sense of promoting and booking and putting together a really good show. And and that's what a lot of the promoters are trying to do that work for the NWA. I know I personally have gotten to meet and talk with a lot of people that work in the NWA. Uh, and they're amazing people that that are super supportive and, and super behind us. Um, and I think that's really amazing to have. Uh, like I said, because it's just so rare. It's so rare to have people truly be happy for your success and want to help. And, and we are looking to return that. Um, it, and it's going to be really, really cool stuff. And, and yeah, it's, you can say the NWA is a bit smaller than it used to be. I personally don't think that. Like I mentioned, they drew 1,500 people in Carthage, Texas, which 
if you know anyone in Texas or outside of Texas, I personally don't didn't even know where Carthage, Texas was. Uh, I had to be told that it's a North Texas uh, city, and they drew fifteen hundred people. Yeah, oh, wow. fifteen hundred people. Um, you know, they're working. Uh, two of the end of the NWA uh, World Champion and the NWA Tag Team Champions are from New Japan Pro Wrestling right now. Uh, Satoshi Kojima and Kojima, as well as Hiroshi Tenzan, are the tag team champions. Mm-hmm. Um, and the uh, Bruce Starf is constantly flying to Japan to work with the NWA, or excuse me, to work with New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, and they're dealing New Japan Pro Wrestling, which can be considered the top wrestling promotion in Japan. And and quite frankly, it's one of the top wrestling promotions in the world right now. It's the WWE um, of Japan, right? It absolutely is, and okay. it's gotten amazing. I mean, you know, Ring of Honor is working with New Japan, and and there's so many other companies that want to get a part of that. And I want to point uh, out your your Carthage, Texas, that drew 1,500 fans. Um, that's a that's a city with a population of 6,800. 6, yeah. So that that's pretty impressive. It's it's amazing, and it's not it's not a matter of like you know. Yeah, they're not Ring of Honor. Yeah, they're not, you know, like a Chikara, which we'll mention later. They're not that kind of style. It, this was an NWA-style show, and, and they drew that amount of fans. It doesn't matter what style it is. It's good wrestling. Mm-hmm. And I, I really think that some big things can happen. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll mention it in, an independent, uh, in the upcoming independent shows coming up. Uh, Satoshi Kojima is coming to uh, America uh, this weekend to defend his NWA World Heavyweight title. And, you know, there's so much happening with the NWA right now. And, and yeah, there's been stuff in the past, um, but not to be like insider or, or anything. Um, Tony Brooklyn and Bruce Tharp uh, have been amazing to us at Inspire Pro, um, super supportive of us. They've been the same way for a lot of NWA promotions, if not all of them. Um, and there's going to be that, like, I, and I can't reiterate this enough, there's going to be that that camaraderie, that ability to work together. And there's going to be some really big things happening. The um, We had an NWA World Women's Championship match at our last show. Um, and now there's a chance that we can do more than more with that and develop that. Um, there's a chance we can do, you know, more stuff. You know, who knows if we get some talents maybe from Japan uh, to uh, to appear on our shows. Um, it's this, I can tell from talkings with the NWA that they're really behind us. Um, and, and this is going to be really fun and, and, and they're looking to do some interesting stuff and they're not going to dissuade us in any way to do new stuff. We also made the announcement, uh, uh, the day after the show, um, because we released on YouTube, our no room to die event from April. Uh, that's the last event we're putting up on our YouTube channel for free because we're partnering with smart Mark media. Awesome. And, and there's, you know, the NWA is totally cool with that. They're not going to say, hey, no, don't do this because we want you to do something like this. No, they're happy for our success. And 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 they want to see us grow because if Inspire, NWA Inspire Pro Wrestling grows, that means the NWA grows. Mm-hmm. And it's it's really, honestly, some really great stuff that's happening. Um, I just can't really reiterate that enough. Uh, just talking with these guys, I'm super excited. I'm, I'm really, really pumped. Um, and I can't wait to to see what happens going forward. Um, if if the testament to our show Sunday um, uh, is the testament to what Inspire Pro is going to do going forward, I it's going to be amazing. I, I'm really happy. Um, but I, I also do want to reiterate how fun uh, Sunday was. Um, we're going to talk about it, obviously, uh, uh, for stuff that's going to be happening in your neck of the woods, Sorg fantastic um, ladder match between Sammy Guevara, Barrett Brown, and Ricky Starks. Um, when the DVD and video on demand comes out on SmartMark Video for this, you need to buy this because that match is probably one of the most insane things I've ever seen live. It is spectacular. And there's top to bottom a lot of really good stuff on the card we had. Um, Tadasuke of Osaka Pro Wrestling, uh, his last match uh, in America uh, before departing for Japan again. Um, and it was a pleasure to put on that match with him and Jojo Bravo. Um, it, it was really cool to be a part of that. Um, also, like I mentioned, the NWA World Women's Title match. Um, really amazing to see. Barbie Hayden and Portia Perez put on a, a clinic. Um, uh, they were really amazing. I got to call that match with Rachel Summerlin. And, and it was really really cool stuff that was 
one of and it felt like a main event it felt big uh the crowd was hyped for it um and i think it's a testament that you know women's wrestling can really thrive and that's something i think we're going to pursue going forward um and and even speaking of women's wrestling uh, i guess we can call this a bit of a mayhem show bump uh because a a, a guest from a, a couple of weeks ago on the indie mayhem show uh delilah doom debuted for us on sunday uh, in a in a singles match against jessica james so a bit of a mayhem bump there uh it's good to uh, be working with her uh uh, sort of obviously we, we talked with her in the interview uh, a few weeks ago a uh, younger name in the independent wrestling world uh, a bit of a rookie in a sense but she's uh, hopefully going to uh, grow and prosper with us so uh, i think it'll be really cool stuff um and yeah type to bottom the, the show um was really really fun to put out um it was it was just super fun um and we have another show coming up in three weeks time uh not even a month three weeks um uh, because we're crazy um <laughs> june 15th we're doing clash of the bash uh which is going to be sort of one of our annual events uh, that we will be holding uh, uh from now on uh beach attire uh is encouraged <laughs> by the way um because it is a clash of the bash it's it's a it's the summertime, so and it's Austin, Texas, so we better enjoy it while we have it. So, so um, this is one thing I love about Texas wrestling because we've talked about before other promotions with their prom theme. Nobody does a theme like this. Like, no, like there's something not. about you guys and the theatric crowd participation that I do not see anywhere else. It's it's fun. I, I think I think we're our the biggest thing with Inspire is that everyone that's sort of helping and running it, we're all big nerds. Mm-hmm. We're gigantic nerds, and and. Um, we like to have fun and we put on, I like to think we put on amazing wrestling, but we like to have fun as well. And then when we have fun and the crowd has fun, it's, it's, it's a really great feeling. Um, so yeah, this is going to be a really cool show. Uh, we already have a couple matches announced for that show. Uh, Mike Dell will be defending his inspire pro championship against the American psycho Lance Hoyt, uh, which should be a really amazing match. Nice. Uh, we also have, had a couple of matches announced uh, back on uh, th- uh, this past Sunday. One that I'm really excited about. We have a first time matchup when Ray Death Row uh, will square off one on one with Matthew Palmer uh, for the number one contendership for the Inspire Pro Championship. And that is going to be absolutely killer. Um, uh, Matthew Palmer is one of the most underrated guys in the state of Texas right now that I think the world needs to know about. And obviously, you know, Ray Rowe, mm-hmm. uh, Ring of Honor star now, has been killing it everywhere. So. That is going to be a phenomenal match to put on. Um, there's going to be a lot of really cool stuff. Um, and yeah, I'm just super excited, Sorg. I'm, I'm super excited for indie wrestling right now. And for uh, me particularly in indie wrestling. I, in a matter of a day's, two days time, I became an NWA member. And my work is going to get put out on Smart Mac Video. Like, that's insane to me. It's awesome. And, then it, and it makes me feel happy, so... Uh, from the chat, uh, like like Hicks saying, Sammy Guerva is an insane person. Uh, by the way, we're going to get him versus uh, Chris Sabin here in a few weeks. Oh, at uh, Super Indy. Uh, Petey uh, Williams or Petey Williams. I'm sorry, Petey Williams. We're getting him again, which is going to be insane. Yes, that I is think be an absolutely amazing match. Am I, if I'm not mistaken, wait, is uh no no Andrew, never, never mind never mind. I'm trying to remember who's saying. Oh, Sabin gets the winner of the four away last chance match. I believe, I believe uh, 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 whoever wins the Sammy. Uh, P.D. Williams match gets either Ethan Page or Lewis Linden. Oh my God, um, which one will be really good too? This is um, I, this. Lineup. I kind of want no offense, but I kind of want Sammy Guevara to win your tournament. So okay. <laughs> me too. So we see more of them. So yes, for one thing, because, I mean, this is uh, probably the third time it will have been up here for us. So, uh, but yeah, brackets were released recently over on uh, IWCWrestling.com. Sorry to cross over a little bit there. Um, no, totally. but, but this is exciting. This is some cool stuff we have uh, going on here locally. So absolutely. So yes, Sammy, Sammy Guevara did crazy things with ladders on Sunday that I don't think any human should ever do ever again. Um, and I'm so, I honestly, I'm super happy that, you know, they're putting him first round against Petey Williams in the super indie because I think it's going to be a huge opportunity for him. So it, it sounds like, and I'm, I'm, yeah, it sounds like Super Indie is going to be pretty crazy this year. Um, this is one of the better collections of talents. I mean, you got guys like Chris Saban returning who won the one <laughs> Super Indie three ten years ago, uh, for yeah. instance. Uh, PD Williams, who's he's been in here before. Um, he's he's one of those guys that's been uh, off and on with IWC over the years. Um, and, and plus all the other guys, you know, Matt Taverns, ta- sorry, Matt Taven's coming back uh, from uh, Ring of Honor, the TV. Is he current TV champ? 
or uh, form, uh, form, former TV champion. Former. Uh, and, and he was in, up in Meadville. Uh, Lewis Linden's great. Um, Ethan Page kind of showed me, okay, this is what he's about against Facade. Ethan Page got uh, uh, also had a big weekend. He got a Canadian Destroyer from Buff Bagwell at AIW. Oh my god! I, I should pull up that video. Uh, I think it's on the Mayhem group, right? Um, uh, but but to finish off, uh, Low Rider, who I think you have some experience with, is, yeah. is a part of the uh, show as well. Low Rider a couple times for Inspire Pro, so the... definitely definitely a good grab as well. He is a trip. Um, <laughs> <laughs> from... <laughs> no pun intended. He is a trip. Um, but no, yeah, he, he's, a, he's a blast. And we've had him up here a few times for IWC. Um, so, yeah, so Buff Bagwell can, I don't know if this is like, holy crap, Buff Bagwell, or is a Canadian Destroyer not as complicated a move as we all thought it was? It may not be, but the fact oh my that Buff God. Bagwell is doing it. <laughs> Who did he do it to? He did it to Ethan, uh, Page. Ethan Page. Okay. So, yeah, uh, Buff Bagwell actually beating Jock Sampson in the first round of oh. uh, the AIW. Sorry, Jock Sampson. But, I mean, that's crazy awesome for Jock Sampson. Um. <laughs> But yeah, but and but and that got shared like everywhere. Mm-hmm. Like news sites were sharing that everywhere. Yeah. Um. So good. So good for them. Like, it, good for them. Good for AIW. Um. Good for, good Buff, for Buff Bagwell. Bagwell. Fifty-five thousand yeah. views over on AI Wrestling's YouTube page. Holy Jesus crap! Christ. There it goes one more time. Wow. Wow. Amazing. Buff Bagwell. Really, really. Buff is still the stuff. Who would know? Awesome, Anyways. awesome. Um, awesome. So let's take a look. Uh, what do you want to talk about, Chikara next? We can talk about Chikara. Uh, Chikara apparently did very well uh, this past weekend on their return uh, 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 in Easton. Uh, really, really good stuff from them. Uh, their uh, their you only live twice event. Uh, big stuff. I believe they sold over. They I believe it was the from what I checked they got a uh, fourteen hundred, which is also really crazy. I believe they got like a thousand at WrestleCon, so mm-hmm. uh, this is real. That's really cool for them. Uh, they had a lot of really good stuff, uh, uh, culminating with uh, Icarus uh, winning the Grand Championship from Eddie Kingston, uh, sort of like in a big like closure moment, I guess you could say, uh, for this. So really cool stuff there. Sad news from there too, because apparently they killed Cobalt. <laughs> what? And I'm not happy about that, Sorg, because Cobalt's my favorite. And Cobalt is secretly the greatest, and I'm super sad that apparently he died um, uh, from a, from an attack from a mystery man. Um, so that's super sad. Um, but they also they also made a big announcement at that uh, that show, Sorg, that um, not only is Shakara back, they're bringing back King of Trios. Nice. And I heard crazy reports that like they're pretty much already sold out of tickets. Holy hell! <laughs> That's a three-day event that they're doing uh, out in Easton, PA. Well, okay, that's fine that I'm booked for the weekend then. Yeah, but <laughs> God, God, King of Trios is is kind of like the peak of indie wrestling. And, mm-hmm. and you know, that's that's awesome that they're bringing it back because uh, obviously it's an amazing show. Uh, at the same time, we talk, uh, when we talked before about Mike Quackenbush's uh, uh, audit wrestling interview where he talks how much of a financial nightmare sometimes wrestling can be. And I would think that King of Trios is probably their biggest financial nightmare because of all the talent they bring in. Mm-hmm. Um, but if they're filling that place like with a thousand people, like that's really cool. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited for Chikara. Chikara is doing some good stuff now, and, uh, and I'm happy it's back. It's back, and I'm I hope happy. they got some great stuff. I, I hope so, like Chikara like breaks through, so it becomes less of a financial nightmare for Mike, and uh, and you know, and becomes bigger. You know um mm-hmm. like because it deserves to you know they're doing something fantastic over there i think like all this craziness has brought a lot more attention to it and maybe that the you know uh, uh making the heart grow fonder as a uh hey Chakara might go away and enjoy it while you can and now everybody's 1400 people are showing up to their shows that's fantastic definitely but yeah that was that's really awesome for Chakara. i'm super excited for them um I guess we can talk about some upcoming independent wrestling shows that are happening this weekend, Sork. Sure. Uh, one I want to talk about, because, yeah, I'm going to plug the NWA stuff, because holy shit, the main event for this upcoming NWA Houston event uh, in Cyprus is fucking killer. Um, Satoshi Kojima, as I mentioned before, is defending the NWA uh, World Championship the first time he's ever competing in Texas, Satoshi Kojima uh, against Carson. Uh, and Carson wrestles for us in Inspire. He wrestles pretty much everywhere in Texas. 
he has got to be one of the breakout stars of this of this state because he's got an amazing talent and amazing look. Um, if he is not making WWE money in a year or two, I don't know what the what is wrong with the wrestling world because uh, he is amazing uh, and he's got the like a gigantic opportunity here wrestling Kojima. Um, and I'm super excited for him. I'm super sad that I can't make that show. Um, but I definitely think you should go support it. Uh, go follow uh, NWA Houston. I believe it's NWAHouston.com. And if you're near Houston, uh, Cypress area, go to this show because it's – how often are you going to live in Texas and be able to see Satoshi Kojima wrestle? Um, it's something you need to check out, and, uh, and you should definitely go support them. Uh, and I believe, yeah, that's at nwahouston.com to go get more information or go uh, like them on Facebook, NWA Houston as well. Um, so, yeah, uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of cool stuff also happening uh, throughout the uh, indie wrestling world uh, this weekend. Uh, I believe Combat Zone Wrestling is having an event coming up on uh, Saturday the 31st. Uh, they've been... Like I mentioned before, I can't promote them enough as well. Combat Zone Wrestling has been doing crazy amazing stuff, uh, especially uh, sort of uh, a very – we talk about sort of evolutions of wrestling and, and, and different, you know, evolving of wrestling promotions. CZW is so much different than it used to be, and mm-hmm. I'm so happy for it. Um, and they look like they have a really good event coming up uh, this Saturday. So uh, if you're in the uh, Dayton, Ohio area – uh, I encourage you to go check that really? out. They're all way in Dayton. That's, yeah, that's, I didn't they know they reached out that far. Yeah, so um, yeah, go support them because uh, it looks like this their Prelude to Violence event uh, is going to be really really fun. Uh, and they've got they've got some of the, the probably the top pro wrestlers around mixing it up with you know uh, some of their stars. Uh, uh, Shane Strickland uh, is going to be on the show. Uh, you know him very well from IWC. Um, they, they have Air Fox, Rich Swan, uh, BJ Whitmer. They have a women's tag match. Uh, their new uh, CZW champion, Biff Busick, and a lot of really cool stuff. So go support them, uh, CZWrestling.com, and, and go check them out. Uh, and and get, get a taste of the new CZW, the, uh, the, in my opinion, the improved CZW. So. Awesome. But yeah, that's uh, that's all I have, Sorg. Is there anything else that uh, uh, the people should know about of uh, coming up besides, obviously, the, uh, the Dustin Batdorf Invitational? Uh, the big thing this weekend, I, I got something for the next weekend uh, for here locally uh, with some guys. Uh, with VOW Vicious Outcast Wrestling is going to have a show. Mm-hmm. I believe that is the seventh of June, the the Saturday, and of course DBI out there. Uh, of course, I, I don't have anything else here in the area, unfortunately. So. Uh, Beyond but that. if there's any wrestling near you and you're listening, go to it because go support those guys because they're busting their butts and, and, and they're looking to break out and you could help them. You can help them do that by yeah, paying, uh, paying $10, $15, whatever it may be to go watch them do what they do. For sure. Go go check out your Smart Mark videos. The uh, What was it? The uh, what, what was the Chikara uh, uh, Wrestling is Fun video wrestling on demand? Wrestling I believe. WS, WSU. The, the, women, yep. the Women's Wrestling Fed has has an on-demand. Uh, ROH. YouTube.com YouTube. slash Inspire Pro Video. There's shows up there for free. <laughs> watch, watch wrestling. It. Share wrestling. Just go hit it YouTube. Go into a YouTube rat hole and, and, and just find some really cool, uh, really cool stuff there. You know, uh, just just hit any of that stuff. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, it, it, it's a uh, uh, it's a good time. As we talked about a little bit with Juice earlier, it's a good time to get into wrestling. Um, you, you, there's so much more than what's on Monday nights, you know. Um, and and yeah, there's many more, much more on the WWE Network. But there's also like these are the guys, <laughs> and it's great to see some of these guys come up through, you know, and become those guys. You know, um, or or there's a whole other world with New Japan wrestling. Um, it, it, it is a good it's a it's good to see that, you know, it's like watching the minor leagues. It is. It is like watching the minor leagues at the minor but leagues. Get, you from, can get uh, a lot of enjoyment from minor league. What, what, they, they, it's a, it, well, you know, I, you know, it's a bad I, I'm actually sorry I made that analogy because it's, it's more <laughs> than that. It's like but, it's more like the arena football 
and the XFL and oh, Canadian. Oh, no, this isn't working. working. This isn't working. No, they're, they're alternatives. I, I see a lot of them as alternatives, but yeah. Um, but there are a lot of guys. You know, I think you're going to see in the future. I mean, I mean, a few years ago, uh, uh, uh you know, we saw Daniel Bryan. In a mm-hmm. small place in Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> I threw a tie in. <laughs> or, or the Hammerstein Ballroom in New York City back in, I think, 2007, uh, for instance. You threw a tie at him. That's right. <laughs> I, paid, I paid for a dude, a Canadian dude in a luchador mask, uh, $15 for a T-shirt uh, in a bar in Austin, and now he's wrestling for the top wrestling company in the world. Exactly, exactly. Uh, we've had, you know, we've had guys down here in the studio that are, are wrestling on a national stage right now, uh, mm-hmm. with, with TNA specifically, or, or, uh, guys on the show, like, you know, Logan Shula, who just had his first jobber match on NXT. Uh, but everybody's got to start somewhere there. Right. Um, yeah. or Jimmy nuts. He was a cheeseburger <laughs> and you too. One day when the, when WWE comes to your town, we'll get to play. Who's that? Who's that indie guy whenever security comes down for a spot on, on Monday Night Raw? To which I usually go to Eamon and say, do you know any of these guys? <laughs> and normally I do. Yes. Sometimes I don't, but normally I do. And that's how he got to where he is. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for that. Thanks for Juice Jennings. Go check him out and go check out the, the, the Dustin Bart Matt Dorf Invitational uh, up on Facebook. Um, and uh, please, if, if you're not go in there again check out the dvd we'll have it on sorgatronmedia.com it's a great cause and if there's anybody else doing wrestling in your area for a similar cause meanville was a great one for uh the the high school up there for us um and uh of course salute the truth with rwa last month was a great one supporting uh the 9 11 fund um it is a lot of great wrestling doing great things for the community look for those support those if you find them in your area or online if there's any you know, anything like on an IP review or something or DVDs, go support that great stuff going on. Thank you, Eamon. Go check him out. He's Eamon to please on the Twitters. I'm at Sorgatron. Uh, and of course you can hit us up. We're at wrestling show.com. We're on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, um, Spreaker and iHeartRadio. radio. You can find this show. Um, or, and you can find everything, uh, of course on the wrestling mayhem show, super feed. Just, just Google that. And you'll find out where that is. Uh, iTunes, Stitcher, I believe, uh, right now. And, uh, of course, uh, you can check out this show. We're here at 11 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 o'clock Central, at live.sorgatronmedia.com. And you can drop us a line at goodtimesatwrestlingmayhemshow.com, 412-206-WMS0 for the hotline voicemail, at Mayhem Show on Twitter, and Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook, Google+, and the great Facebook group. And with that, with Eamon, uh, uh, thanks, Juice. Uh, go support some indie wrestling, and we'll see you guys next week. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an